If you look at one of our first scripts, then you can see I was just reaching the column names by using here a collection element with get value. And then in parentheses, there was the column name to reach out. This is so cool and it works pretty good as we have seen, but uh, I have to know the column names uh, to write them into these double quotes. And that might sometimes a little bit hard, especially because then I have to go in a SQL tool or an object browser and figure out how these column names are so that I can use them. So it could be nice to use IntelliSense in Visual Studio to find the right column names. Therefore, we need something that is called type wrappers, which is the next thing I like to show you. Therefore, I jump back to my test script. Here we are. And you can see here that to use these type wrappers, I have to create a single object, for example. And I do that this time a little bit different than before, because I create that single object in a way that it is a new person object. And for Active Directory accounts, I will create an ADS account object and so on. If I do that, and I do that on the base of the session, which is my connection to the database, then I can use the single object and, and hit on the dot button. And with the dot button, I can then get automatically things like last name, description, title, and whatever I like. For example, a custom property, here we are. So, and then I can just handle all of these properties. This is the way to do that and to use the type wrappers. And again, if you need some more examples, always look please into the script SDK where you can find that. Last thing, I can then save my object. And with that, I created easily one of these single person objects. A single object, it's a cool thing, especially if I can use type wrappers to get my values defined. But on the other hand side, if you look at that script, I do that in a specific sort order. I start with the last name, I add the first name, and then I build the central account. If I do that differently, maybe in a way that I build the central account first, there will be templates in the background. Please remember how Identity Manager works. And then my central account will be recalculated on the base of these templates. That means from time to time in my objects, the order in which I just add values to my properties is important. In a type wrapper, single object, like I use it here, I have to make sure that the order is correct. That means during the debugging session, it could be that I have to change the order of my parameters if I do something wrong. But there's a other way as well to make this obsolete. That means to force the system to take the right order. Therefore, I just step down and here's my next code segment I like to discuss. You see, I create a person object as well. This time it's not a DB person object. That is because I created one with that name before as an I entity object on the base of the session source, create new person object. So it is a person single object. Here we are. And then I create something other else, which is named a property back. The property back here with the variable name back, it's created. And then I start to put values from my person object into that back. Unfortunately, here I have to define the column names on my own. But once all of these properties are just filled with values, I can use that back and say change entity session, bind that on a person object. And doing so, this command automatically puts the values in the right order into that specific object. And with that, I can save the object. Here we are and the complete object could be stored in the database. Next step in my exercises is to think a little bit about objects and to store objects in the database. We all know that single objects are one of the most expensive objects we can create. They take time to be created and they take as well time to get stored into the database. If we are working with a SQL database connection, all of that happens with a good speed. But for example, if we talk to a web service, like our application server or something else, it is a big difference between storing five new objects in one session or to create one session per object. That means to create one object action per object I want to save, modify, delete, or whatever. As well, here is something that can help me and we name that the start unit of work. How that works? 
In this script, you can see two different things. First, I don't need really single objects in a way of so that I create a person collection and this person collection is a collection I can use for editing data. To do so, I define the collection person. Here it is. In this collection person, I use on the session something that is named get collection together with the query. All stuff we did in the past as well. But this time I define an entity collection load type. And this entity collection load type now says this collection gets created in a way of that all property of the person object gets automatically loaded into the collection. That is what the bulk thing here says. Entity collection load type bulk loads my objects defined by the query plus all of the properties of this object. Knowing that, it's more or less like to have all display objects, but uh, the bulk not only uh, loads display object, it loads especially editable properties. Knowing that, I can now start something which is named the unit of work. Yeah, here it is. It gets started on the base of the session. And now I handle all of my collection objects. For example, in this exercise, I like to change the description. So for each element in my collection, I define first here string. That string gets the old value of a description field because I don't want to lose data. And with that, here is an if that says if there is something in the description, then add the new stuff to the description. I add just here uh, a specific type of text. It's better readable here in this line touched by a script. That is what I want to add to the description. Okay, makes not really sense, but it should uh, show you what we like to do. And to make the whole thing a little bit better readable, that is what I do here in that very long line. I just use the stuff that was before in the description field. I add a line break, which is a VB carriage return line field here. And then I just add the string, then you can see it there. If the description field is already empty, I have only to type in touch by a script, which is here. So once I handled my description field and the value it's done, I add this element I have modified with a put to the unit of work. And now there is an element. So the whole thing happens for the complete for each loop. That means if there are a thousand objects, a thousand object gets modified and written into that unit of work. And now a little bit down below, I commit the unit of work and committing the unit of work automatically all of these thousand objects I'm talking about gets stored into the database in one database action, which is pretty cool because then I have not always to connect to the database, store the object, close the connection and so on and so on. One last thing to add, a unit of work, it's not something you know as a transaction. A transaction could be something you can have in addition.